What's up guys, this is DDP back with probably in all likelihood my last video before I go on my vacation. I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about this trip. This is not my typical video, not my traditional format. Uh, this is really just more a video to talk about. I mean, it's a vlog really. Uh, if you have any interest in me, the person or anything like that, maybe it'll interest you. Uh, this is just something that I thought would be fun to do. So, I don't know. I'm going to do it. I'll try and be brief. Basically, the reason I take this trip is I want to clear my head, recharge, and refocus. It, it's not just about getting away for a week, right? I could take a vacation and I could go somewhere uh, or even a staycation. If it was just about like, oh, I just need to get away from work and focus on other stuff for a little bit. No, I, I've done that. This trip is different for me. While by all intents and purposes, I am a city boy, uh, I am still someone who has always felt refreshed. And this is hardly puts me in a minority here. Har uh, always felt refreshed out in the wilderness a little bit. And I don't want to be the person that's camping on the ground in a tent or something like that, but I love staying in uh, these rustic cabins out in the middle of nowhere. You just have, you're surrounded by just nature and silence and all this fresh air, and it really helps declutter your mind, I think. I did this for the first time last year after having wanted to do it and talked about doing it for years prior to that. And it was, it was one of the more gratifying experiences I think I've had in a long time. Um, I went last January as well. Didn't go to where I'm going now. This is a different location this year. But the idea was basically, hey, let's get out there. I don't want any distractions. I don't want to think about work or bills or anything else in my general life right now that I, that I have to. So my wife and I went out there and... I didn't, I didn't deal with my phone or anything. Like The phone made the trip, but it was turned off 98% of the time I was there. I basically would turn it off, leave it at the bedside, and then every morning when I would wake up, I would turn it on for about 30 minutes, check my messages, not browse like news or sports stuff or anything like that, text messages, voicemails, things of that nature, and... After 30 minutes, I would put it back away. And the idea was I didn't want distraction. I wanted to really clear my head and figure out what I wanted to do with the coming year and my own goals and things of that nature. So it uh, it helps a lot, man. You'd be shocked if you really thought about it, how just dependent we are on our phones. Because I'm not going to lie, the first few hours there without my phone with it turned off in the next room, I was a little bit antsy. I was a little bit jittery. I wanted my phone. I wanted to, you know, see what I was missing, see if I was missing anything. Um, and of course, there was big Mavs news last year when I was gone. It was Dennis Smith Jr. stepping away from the team prior to getting traded. And it was like, oh, okay, here we go with all this again. But I largely stayed away from that. And I was, I was pleased about that. But even still, uh, the idea was pretty much like, okay, Let's just stay out here. I don't want to be on the internet. Like I had, the cabin had Wi-Fi, but I didn't have it turned on on my laptop. And I kept my phone out of the reach. All I did was read and write and hike. And there were a couple times we went into the town, but I mean, we were probably 12 miles from the nearest town. Um, probably a few miles from the nearest neighbor. And that was really, really cool. Just deep in the woods, very, very freeing. So what I did that first night, and this is this is why the trip uh, was so gratifying for me, not only just being able to like breathe so freely out there, but going out there and that first night, I sat out on the back deck and I just sat there with a glass of scotch, not gonna lie. And I, my wife was inside reading and I was just like, I'm not, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to enjoy this for a while. You know, when you, you'd be surprised how cluttered your mind feels a lot of the time, whether it's just, you know, whether you have some degree of ADD or ADHD or whatever, um, 
or even just you know day to day life. Even if you don't have one of those conditions, uh, your your mind is sporadic. You're constantly wandering, and that's just short. That's in part short attention span, just through our dependence on things like technology and um, you know dopamine and all that. So it's one of those things where I just said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak. I'm gonna sit out here, and I'm just gonna relax. And I'm going to let my mind wander. I knew I ultimately wanted to get my head clear. And once I felt like when you sit there and you really think about it, your mind feels like it's just a garbled mess of different directions of thought. And it's all entangled. If you can just sit there and give it time and space to just untangle itself you get to a neat straight line of train of thought, kind of like you do with meditation. I've never been any good at meditation. I've tried it a couple times, but uh, it, it's just, that's the idea, right? You, you block out all the noise, and some of the best advice I ever got was you'd be surprised what you could learn about yourself if you would just listen. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to... At this time last year, I'm not going to lie to you guys, you might have seen it at times uh, on the channel, my mental health wasn't as good. I was incredibly stressed and anxious about a lot of things. I was dealing with some very difficult, uh, challenging family issues, and I felt like I was cracking under the weight of it. There were times I jumped on live streams with you guys where I was having to, I felt like it was like masking tape holding my face kind of right and as streams went on uh it felt like that tape was kind of peeling away a little bit where the mask was slipping and you know my feeling broken state was kind of showing through and i didn't want that i didn't want to put that out there because i mean that's not that's not anything uh you guys care about so it, it's i mean it's not anything anyone <laughs> really cares about it it's just my own shit to work through so i needed the trip last year i wanted to declutter my mind, figure out what I wanted to do with this coming year at the time, 2019, which had just started. And, you know, as much as I love doing these post game shows and I love them and I love doing Mavs fast break, it's not my complete vision for prospect. It's definitely part of the vision, a big part of it in terms of regular content, but I have other ambitions too, right? TPN is one of those main things. That's something that I actually sat down and thought about while I was on that trip. But um, before I go into that, the, the whole point of me sitting outside that first night, and it was chilly, but I sat out there for an hour and about 30 minutes. Again, no phone, not a book, not a computer, nothing. I just sat in silence and let my mind decompress. And at the end of about, about an hour and a half, it did. And I knew it the second it happened, that I just felt very level, very clear-headed. And I, I finally kind of just under my breath said, okay. Well, let's, now let's start asking ourselves some important questions here. And, you know, that ranged from, to, to paraphrase it basically, uh, and this will put it in the lamest sense, I'm sure. But kind of one of those gener general, like, you know, it's like, oh, what do you want to do with your life? What are your goals? What What is important to you moving forward? But in a vague, overarching way, I probably said it. Uh, I probably leaned into the cliche being, you know, half aware of it and basically said, all right, what do I want from the universe here? What What is my goal? What is it that I strive for? And... Dallas Prospect is a huge part of that. It is probably the main part of that. But I do have other goals and ambitions as well. Uh, Dallas Prospect is just the pr primary uh, company of mine. I have actually several. And other ones are more so in development right now. They're very much in the background. But all of these are under one umbrella for my own personal company. And... Other projects of mine include things like video game development. Like I want to write and develop uh, some, you know, just some indie games. Nothing crazy. I'm not wanting to do it professionally. It's just something I've always been interested in. 
Uh, I'm a writer. I've been a writer longer than I even thought about doing sports journalism or anything like that. I've been doing writing for 10 years as far as my own novels and everything. I've tried going um, the traditional publishing route and been a little bit rebuffed there. But I think I'm going to lean a little bit more into self-publishing moving forward. But I want to I wanna work on that. I want to get my stories out there, uh, my novels, my short stories. I have a horror anthology I've been working on. I want to publish those things and I want to release them. It's just an extra revenue stream as well for my work. I'm spending the time on it anyway. It might as well hopefully make a little money. But, you know, there, there's just a bunch of things like that under the under this umbrella. Um, I've even pondered the idea of, you know, this was bridging off the back of TPN, which was a major thing I wanted to incorporate for Dallas Prospect, a means of kind of satirical pokes at fun or at a, at sports journalism and you know your espns and fox sports ones of the world your particular sports journalists or you know personalities out there i wanted to you know poke fun at that but i wanted to do it in a higher quality way than frankly i was able to set up this space i have here in my office you see where my arms cut off there's not a hell of a lot more beyond that the camera is back not all the way to the wall, but about 75% of the way to the wall. And I've got about a foot outside of each arm span here. Like, for what I do for this, it works fine. For what I wanted to do for TPN, there just wasn't a practical way to do it without a lot, a lot, a lot of work around. And after a few months of trying to get that right, I realized it was better just to kind of put it on the back burner and keep the ideas coming, but to worry about it later. So... That first night was basically just figuring all of that out, figuring out what I wanted to do and, you know, being honest with myself. Like I, I didn't, I didn't question or judge anything that I, I threw out there as an idea and as a desire because I said, you know, that's part of what you do when your mind is cluttered. Like right? if I ask myself right now, uh, what, what do I want to make my primary focuses for 2020? I could give you a, a series of answers, but on the heels of every one of those answers, there's probably a yeah, but, or something to that effect. There's going to be something where I'm making either some kind of excuse or, you know, basically expressing doubt about it in some way, some kind of way of basically undercutting myself and making it sound like uh, it's almost not, not worth trying. Not that it's not worth trying, but that it's basically something I should like Hey, it's great to want that, but you know, understand it's not super likely. Like that kind of is what the tone, even if you don't realize that's what you're doing to yourself, that's what you're doing to yourself. And you know, I, I've always been someone who I, I swing wildly from you know unrelenting ambition to self doubt, like crippling self doubt. And it just depends, man. It, it can happen in the course of a day. I can sit there and I can be like, bro, I'm going to do all this shit over here. I'm going to have several books released, whether it's with the traditional route or self-publishing. Uh, I'm going to adapt a couple of them into films, short films like I want to do. I'm going to develop a video game. I'm going to have prospect rolling where it's a full brick and mortar operation and I've got actual employees and things like that. That's what I've, that's what I say. Sometimes I'm looking at that and I'm like, Phew. I can do that within three to five years. I can reach that point. And then there's other times where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I, I appreciate what I have and where I'm at, but I don't know how to take those next steps. And it's overwhelming. Sometimes just being overwhelmed by not knowing where to start or where to go next uh, can be debilitating. And that's what I wanted to uh, kind of clear out of the way. I wanted to get all that other background noise out of the way when I had this conversation with myself finally. And it was all internal, aside from the initial like acknowledgement of like, okay, my head's clear, okay. And then I asked the question aloud and I just left everything else internal out there in the middle of nowhere. Hold on. But yeah, it, it's just, it's a, it's a great experience out there. And I repeated the thing, I repeated that process every night. And what changed was it didn't take as long with each night it was easier but in fact by the last night there 
I was able to get back into that complete clear headed mindset in less than 10 minutes. It's just something that it's very therapeutic to me because the next night it was a different line of questioning. It was like, okay, let's start thinking and mapping out the details of how we would do this. What are my major goals? What are my focuses? And what are the steps to moving towards those? I've largely followed through with that. You know, I, I've largely I've largely done well at what I set out to last year. And now, you know, I was able to unpack a lot of the a lot of the stress and weight that I felt was kind of weighing on me at that time last year and understand it and make sense of it, understand my place in it. And that allowed me that I mean that was a massive weight off my shoulders. So between the space and distance to the point where I didn't know what time of day it was, I didn't know yeah, I mean, there were clocks in the in the place, of course, but like you know, the stove and all that, but even in that case, um I, I think at some point before we got there the power had gone out. Um, because when I did get in initially I noticed that it wasn't uh it was like three o'clock, but it was flashing, so the power had gone off at some point. So other than checking my phone in the morning and having it on for that 30 minutes, I didn't really know what time it was at any point. I didn't have the computer or phone hardly at all. And all I did was work offline, read a lot, write a lot, hike, and clear my head. And it was incredibly gratifying. I mean, I, I said it even before we left the trip. I was like, this has to be a new yearly thing for me. It has to be. And I don't have to go anywhere crazy. I mean, this year we're actually going further. My wife wanted to go on a trip. Um, and so our compromise was that we are going on a trip. And it's just that we're staying at a cabin in, uh, in a different state. Last time we went just to Oklahoma and to Broken Bow. And this time we're going actually into Colorado. Um, and we're going to stay still in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. But it's going to be snowy air conditions and everything. Hence the picture behind me. But that's the idea, man. It's just... I. I think this is a very good trip. I actually highly recommend it. Um, you know, even if you don't have a lot of the the personal issues and stuff that I was kind of dealing with weighing on you, I think there's a lot to be gained from just taking that time to yourself just to decompress. Get out there, get out with all the fresh air, turn off the electronics, and just let yourself relax, breathe. And I promise, at some, at least on some level, you'll find clarity that you lacked before you left, like before you left for the trip. So that's that's my take on it. Uh, if I had it my way, I would buy a cabin probably around the Broken Bow area or something like that, and I would, you know, most of the year Airbnb it or VBRO. That's another one, VRBO. I always mix up the initials on that one, but I would do something like that, rent it out most of the year. So it's, you know, paying, helping pay for itself. But then I would have certain times of the year like this, where for one week or hell, maybe two weeks, I wouldn't rent it out. I would instead go there myself and I would probably, I would probably box out, carve out about a month and a half out of the year. You know, not in high traffic times. I mean, January is a slow traffic time for Broken Bow for cabins anyway, um, which only added to the peace and serenity, which was great. But that's the kind of thing I would like to do, like give myself that outlet and lean into it frequently. Now, it's not an option, unfortunately. It's not a viable, uh, rational thing for me to even consider because, yeah, life's changing quick. In a week, I'll be back in school trying to finish my degree. Uh, in June, I'll have my daughter here, my first child, and, you know, I still got life here. I still got a full-time job that I got to attend to. I still got investors I got to talk to. I did not, probably shouldn't have mentioned that, but, um, that's a different story for later on once I can say more about it. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm juggling and yeah, it, it gets stressful, but you know what? I'm not someone who can do something I'm not happy with. Like, I, I can't do a job that I don't love. It will 
destroy me from within over time. And yes, I am a web developer in my day job, but I absolutely have felt it at times kind of eating away at me. I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. And it just, you know, I, I'm not here to bitch about it. I understand. It's it's a good job and it's allowed me to make the life that I have now. And for that, I'm grateful for it. But I also understand that it's not a job I can see myself doing and surviving with any degree of sanity for another, what, 35 years? It, it's not a career that I could do that with. I want to take the next step towards the things I know are fulfilling to me. That's sports journalism. That's my creative writing career. That's all of this other stuff I'm trying to do. That's what I want. And the cabin, the trips, that's what that's about. Getting out there, refocusing, recharging, and kind of recentering a little bit. You'd be amazed what you could learn about yourself if you just asked the right questions and listened. I know I tweaked that phrase earlier. I said was some of the best advice I ever got, but that was uh, that's my additional kind of tag on to that. Um, if you ask the right questions, because you got to ask the right questions. It's not just about listening. I think you got to declutter first. Makes it much easier. And then you got to know what you want to ask yourself. What are the important at your core questions that you need answered? Why Why are you taking, in my case, the trip? Well, I, I came out here because I wanted to figure this out, figure this out, and understand this better. There you go. Every night there. And what I would do, in my case, just to kind of help that sink in, I would go back inside and I would uh, type up notes from the experience. Because it, it helped me better process it again. And it helped me remember. And I have those notes still. I can always refer back to and understand. And I think there's a lot of value in that. This year, I'm excited. In the last year, I've gotten very big into typewriters. I've had interest in them for years. But uh, I, I've started up a little bit of a collection. I have a lot of typewriter shit right now. I got five typewriters. Manual typewriters. I got a... Uh, 1929 Royal 10, that is what I call the beast, it's about 40 pounds of steel, types like a fucking dream, even though it was found in this just rinky-dink, beat-to-shit antique shop in bumfuck nowhere, Texas, works great, I love it, it's just heavy as shit, uh, I also have a 1929 Royal Portable, which is a rare wood grain finish, also, uh, very, very nice, I have twin, it's a long story how I got those. Uh, 1934 Remington Rands and my newest one, my Smith Corona. I think this is a 1961. 1961 Smith Corona Skyrider. This is an ultra portable typewriter. It will be coming with me on the trip as part of my carry-on. And I am very excited. As I talked about unplugging and everything on this trip, I wanted to do it last year, but my new typewriter had yet to come in. Um... I wanted to completely unplug, and I wanted to not even have my computer with me. I wanted to have just a typewriter with me. Now, I am bringing the the smallest one I got here, the Smith Corona Skyrider, but I think I still will bring the Mac. It'll just be uh, the MacBook Air. It'll just be like a backup kind of thing because at some point, I'm sure my wife's going to get uh, a little bit irritable listening to the clacking of the keys let me see here i don't know how much of this the mic will pick up it's very uh therapeutic to me there's zero distraction it's just you and the page you can't be distracted by a pop-up email or internet uh you can't be you don't have the underline the red squiggly underline for spell check showing up or the green one telling you about a fragment or something like that um it's just you and the page and it makes it easier to actually get content down instead of writing a sentence staring at it for five minutes and then backspacing and trying to rewrite it again you just go you sit down and go because if you don't nothing's gonna happen and so uh, in terms of just getting content down getting sand in the sandbox if you will 
The typewriter has been a great experience for me. I love working on typewriters. It has become definitely um, a, a vintage collection of mine that I really appreciate. And I use them all. I use all five of them. So I'm thrilled to take that with me, the Smith Corona, at least the smallest one that I can, that I can manageably take with me uh, without worrying about it getting damaged on this trip. So that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. Like, it, it's, I, I know I've talked longer than I thought I would. And I, again, I don't know if you guys are going to have any interest in this or whatever. I don't even know if I, in talking about it, gave the best representation of it or anything like that. I just know that I come back from this trip refreshed. Sometimes you take a vacation and because you're managing so many things and you're on the go, it's almost like you need a vacation from your vacation. That's not the case with this trip for me. For me, this is freeing. This is um, fulfilling as well. So this is everything that I need in a uh, creative exhale and recharge. And that's what I want to do. If I can, I'll do it more often. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of things to figure out. So that's going to do it for this. I'm not even going to bother asking, uh, doing my normal spiel, asking for the like and comment and all that. I'm just going to say, uh, you know, if it's a trip, if it's a type of trip you've thought about doing before, from my own experience, I can't recommend it highly enough. So that's all my time, guys. Until next time, peace.